Today, I'm gonna to show you my five most powerful selection tools in Photoshop. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. You're joining me and my special assistant, Koa, in the background. Now, selections basically allow you to edit certain parts of your image. Maybe you want to change a specific color, or you can even use them to cut your subjects out of their backgrounds. Now, there are a host of regular selection tools like the Marquee tool and the Lasso tool and the Quick Select. Those are fantastic for quick jobs. But in this tutorial, we're going over more advanced selection tools that are going to help you make more accurate selections. So our first tool is called Select Subject. It's a fantastic addition to Photoshop. Basically, it uses AI to identify your subject and allows you to cut them out with a click of a button. So here's our first sample image. We're going to go up to Select and then down to Select Subject. And you can see there aren't any options built into this tool, but by and large, it does a very good job. Now, you can see it, in fact, has created a selection around our subject. The only slight like thing about the automatic tools is sometimes they get a little bit confused. In this case, it's thought some of the background was part of our subject, but that's really not that big of a deal. If I click on my layer mask icon, I can go ahead and cut my subject out, and then I'm gonna use a simple tool like our lasso tool to just make some selections. So we'll just go around, create that selection there. I'm gonna hold shift and go ahead and include these areas. There we go, right down there. And then on my layer mask, I'm gonna go to edit. We're gonna go down to fill, and I'm just gonna fill this with black, making it invisible. And then there we go. Very quickly, we have our subject completely cut out and on a blank background. Our next selection tool is called Select Color Range. This is perfect if you want to identify a certain color and then change that color. Let's go ahead and show you how it works. So here in Photoshop, I want to change the color of her eye makeup. So what we're going to do is go to Select and then down to Select Color Range. Now, you have a little eyedropper tool. Let's move this right over here. You have an eyedropper tool that you can select on different colors. You have a couple options down here on the bottom of how you'd like to see your preview. You can see it on grayscale, the lighter areas get selected and the darker areas don't. Okay, or you can see like a black mat or a white mat. I think this quick mask view is really nice. So in this case, I want to click right here on her eyes and you can see in fact that her eyes become selected and nothing else does because it's the color blue and we're selecting based on a color range. Now, the next option here is to choose your fuzziness. This is gonna allow you to include more of your image or less. Let's go ahead and turn to our selection preview and go to grayscale so we can see how this works. So if I select less, you're gonna see it's just the colors that I clicked on. As I go to more, it's gonna include more and more colors because you can actually see there's a little bit of blue in her hair. If I just go back to the original, you can see there is in fact some blue in her hair as well. Now, let's say we go ahead and lower that down just a little bit, but we want to include a couple more colors. You can use the plus eyedropper tool here to simply click on your image and include more colors. And then in this case, I might just bring my fuzziness down a little bit. And you can see it's doing a fantastic job selecting that color range. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And as you can see, it turns those colors into a selection. Now, I'm just going to go to my adjustment layers. I'm just going to go to a hue slash saturation adjustment layer. And because that selection was active, it automatically loads it into the layer mask of my hue saturation adjustment layer. So all I have to do here, if I want to change that color, is simply go left or right on this hue slider and you can see very quickly and easily it's changing that color, which is incredibly fun and super quick. Our next selection tool is perfect when you need to select fine detailed areas like a person's hair. In this case, we're going to use this to cut out our subject. So let's go up here to select and we're gonna go down to select and mask. Now here on the right hand side, I'm gonna choose my view. We're gonna to go to overlay. We're gonna start off with our tool on the very top left, which just allows us to paint the area we want to turn into the selection. You can see I'm just clicking on here on the background as I paint there, it just kind of learns what you want selected and what you don't. This quick mask view I find right over here, this overlay is actually the best way of working with this tool. Now, as I said earlier, this tool is fantastic for cutting out fine details like hair. So let's go ahead and zoom in here and we're gonna use the Refine Edge tool. So right over here, this allows you to simply refine your edge. So let's make this a little bit smaller and I'm gonna simply paint right over here and it's gonna figure out that I don't want that included in my selection, okay? 
Now, this little area of hair that I do want selected, here's the deal. You start inside of the selection and then paint out, and look at that. It becomes red, meaning that it's now part of that selection. Let's hold spacebar and click and drag down so we can move our canvas. And now I want to refine these earrings a little bit. You can see it did an okay job here, but it didn't make these a selection. So you simply paint over with the refine edge tool. There we go. And it figures out what you want in your selection and what you don't want. So you are pretty much defining it here, but it does most of the work for you. Let's go over here and do the same thing with this area. There we go. Fantastic. And we'll go over here and do the same thing here saying, hey, I don't want this as a part of my selection. Simply paint over it and you're good to go. There we go. Let's go ahead and add the hair. Fantastic. This is an incredibly easy tool to use. There we go. Let's go ahead and add this hair as well. So it seems to know what should and should not be visible in your image. Now, if you ever need to just do a little bit more of an accurate painting, like if it doesn't get the job done perfectly, next you move on to the third tool in the list. And this tool will actually allow you to just simply paint in your selection. So you can hold Alt or Option to minus the selection out, which is what I'm doing right now. Or you can just paint regularly and that will allow you to just paint your regular selection. So basically this is similar to using the brush tool where I'm just basically painting this area in and once I'm done with this tool, it's gonna convert it into a selection. So you can see here on these very difficult areas like hair, I'm just simply able to define exactly what I do and do not want to be visible. There we go. You can use the open and close brackets on your computer to make your brush larger and smaller. There we go. So here we have a little area with hair, or the ear rather, that wasn't perfect. There we go, and we can make this into a selection. Now, keep in mind, what we're gonna wind up doing with this selection is turning it into a layer mask. So if it's not absolutely perfect from this tool, it's okay because we can always work on our layer mask. That looks great. So here are my output settings. We can see right over, let's just scroll right down, okay? My output settings, I can output this to a layer mask, I can do a new layer with a layer mask, or just a selection. In this case, let's choose layer mask. So let's hit okay there. And we can see we have a layer mask. It's actually the opposite of what we want. So we're going to click on our layer mask and hit Control or Command I to invert this. And we can see what a really nice job it does, especially with fine detailed areas like hair. Remember, we made this as a part of the selection and it looks fantastic. Now, earlier we said it's just a layer mask. So if it doesn't include something you want, no big deal. Well, in this case, it didn't do the earrings. But again, we can change a layer mask at any time. So I'm gonna hold shift and then click on my layer mask, which just temporarily disables that layer mask, okay? Then let's try using a tool that from our last section, I'm gonna use select color range because I wanna select these earrings. They're dark on a white background. Select color range is gonna work really well. So let's go to select and then down to select color range. There we go. Let's go ahead and click on these earrings and I'm just gonna bring up my fuzziness. Fantastic, we'll keep on going because I want more of those earrings selected and hit OK. Now that we have our selection from those earrings, I can simply paint white on my layer mask and it'll make it visible. So let's hit B for the brush tool. I'm gonna make sure white is my foreground color and we're just gonna simply paint back those earrings. All right, so there we have it. We can even get the little bit of hair right there as well. Perfect, and now we have a perfectly cut out subject. Now, don't forget, if you want to follow along, you can actually download all of these sample images on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. Our next tool is called the pen tool. It allows you to trace over any object in Photoshop and then turn that into a selection. This is great when some of these automatic tools don't work that well. For instance, we have our image here. Now, let's say I want to select out this iPhone and I want to make a perfect selection out of it. Okay, select and then down to select color range. Well, I could click on the phone, bring my fuzziness down lower a little bit, but I'm still not gonna have a perfect selection. You're gonna see it's gonna get the shadow. It's gonna really take a lot of cleanup work to get that to look good. All right, well, you can try select and then select subject, and you can see it's mostly looking for people, and it did an okay job here, but as you can see down here, this is what my selection's gonna look like. And if I was doing like a product for a website or something like that, I would still have to completely redo this selection 
because it just doesn't look that good. So this is a photograph that's relatively difficult to cut out just the phone, but that's where the pen tool shines. So now let's go ahead and show you how to use the pen tool to trace around your object. And there are a couple of settings that I prefer. Up here at the very top, you wanna to make sure you're set to path with your pen tool. And then I like this setting called rubber band. This will allow you to actually see what you're doing. And I like to bring my thickness to three pixels. It just helps you visualize a little bit better how the pen tool works. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start here on the bottom left corner. I'm gonna click once there, and then because I have rubber band enabled, I can get a preview of where my next point is gonna be. Now, this is just gonna be a straight line. So I can go ahead and zoom out here and go all the way to the edge of the straight line, which is about here. Now at this point, I wanna do a curve. So instead of just clicking, I'm gonna click and drag. So let's click and drag, and there you can see I'm able to create that perfect curve, okay? Now here, I'm just gonna click because I want a straight line. And then here I wanna click and drag because I want a curved line. So let's just click and drag, and this gives us a curved line. There we go, beautiful. Now, in this case, I want this area to be a little bit shorter. So I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and take my little point, bring it over here so I can click there. And then I can even go around this button. You can see I can include a curve right around that button and get as detailed as I am on a smaller scale. And believe it or not, you can actually use this tool to select and cut out an entire subject. There we go, let's go ahead and bring that down there. Let's see, click and drag whenever you wanna make a curve. There we go. Just click if you wanna make a straight line, and for a curve, you wanna click and drag again. If you wanna change direction, hold Alt or Option, grab that little point, and bring it in the direction that you wanna go. Well, looks like there's another button right there. I only remember two buttons on an iPhone, but Maybe they've added a couple, I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna cut it out. Alt or Option to change directions. And then we're gonna bring that down way over here. Next, I don't get confused by this shadow, even though visually it's kind of hard to see it because it just looks like the same color as the shadow. That's why those automatic tools get confused, but this is why the pen tool works because you can choose those points. Okay, let's go ahead and bring it right over here. I'm gonna click. And then we got our last point here. I'm gonna click and drag to close this out. There we go. Now, my other favorite thing about the pen tool is that you can move these points at any time. Let's say you didn't like where you what you did with this point. You can hold Control or Command and click on it. There we go. And when I click on it, you can see I can move it around at any time. So I can simply move it and say, oh, you know what? I like that a little better and you're good to go. So now that we have an accurate path around the cell phone, it's very easy to turn into a selection and then cut out. All we have to do is make sure you're still selected on the pen tool. We're gonna right click and we're gonna go to make selection. Now you can make the edge a little bit softer by feathering the radius. In this case, we want a hard edge, so I'm gonna hit zero. Let's hit okay there and you can see we have a perfect selection. And if I click on my layer mask, you can see the phone is now perfectly cut out, including those buttons. And for instance, if I wanted to put it on a solid color background, let's just go at light blue and put that under our phone. You can see we have a perfectly well-defined edge around the entire phone, exactly where the edge of the phone actually is. Looking good, our last tool for creating advanced selections is called channels. Now, when we use the pen tool, we talked about how it's really good for something that has a hard edge, like an iPhone. Channels are really good when something has a soft edge, like hair or clouds. So in this example, we're gonna cut some clouds out of the background and put them behind our subject. So we have two images here. Now, again, you guys can download all of these images on flurn.com. Just click on the link right down below. So I wanna cut these clouds out of the background. Let's hit F for full screen. We'll go ahead and zoom in, and we're gonna go to Window and down to Channels. Now let's go ahead and take a look at when I click on these color channels. If I click on my red channel, you can see the sky gets really dark and the clouds are white. The reason is because there's not a lot of red in the sky, it's mostly blue. Now green is kind of in the middle and blue is very light because there's a lot of blue in the sky. So it's representing color and light value with black and white. So what you wanna do is basically choose whatever has the most contrast. So my goal is to cut those clouds out. So I want the sky to be as dark as possible and the clouds to be as light as possible. So what we're gonna do is go to our red channel where we have a huge amount of contrast. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this by clicking and dragging it to the new channel icon. 
it's actually super important to duplicate it. If you don't, you can actually mess up your original image. So always duplicate it. Now we're gonna use levels to enhance this contrast a little bit. Let's hit control or command L for our levels. And I'm just gonna make my darks a little bit darker. There we are. Now to turn this channel into a selection, basically it's just gonna select the lighter area and whatever's dark does not get selected. Super easy to do. Simply hold control or command and click here right on the channel and you can see it becomes a selection. So now let's go back to our layers. I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna fill this with white because clouds are white. So we're gonna to go to edit, we're gonna go down to fill and I'm gonna choose my color as white. There we go. Now what we have to do is deselect and then copy these clouds from one image to another. So let's hit control or command D to turn off our selection, also known as deselect. We're gonna go ahead and just copy this from one image to another. So I'm gonna use my move tool. We're gonna to click and drag from one image to another. And there we go. Let's hit F for full screen. And I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. So control or command T. And here we can see I'm gonna be able to make this a bit bigger. I'm gonna right click and go to flip vertical. And there we go. We have really cool clouds around this image. I think that looks really great. Now you can see they're slightly in front of the subject. That's not a big deal because we know how to cut our subject out using select subject. So let's make that invisible. We'll click on our background, we'll go to select, and then we're just gonna go to select subject. It does a great job. And now that select subject is, uh, in fact, selected our subject, instead of putting that on a layer mask for this layer, I'm gonna put it as a layer mask for my cloud layer. So let's click on the layer mask for the cloud layer. If a layer mask ever does the opposite of what you want, in this case, the clouds are only visible where my subject is, just click on your layer mask and hit Control or Command I to invert it. Okay, so now I can unlink the layer and the layer mask and check this out. I can move these clouds anywhere I want to and they're gonna stay behind my subject. You can see they're not gonna be in front of my subject at all because I used select subject to cut my subject out. And now we're just simply moving these clouds around and adding them to the picture. And there we have our five most powerful selection tools in Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna see more of me and occasionally my guest star, Mr. Koa, hit that subscribe button. We'll send you a free tutorial every single week. Thanks again, I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.